Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Complaint Helpful 7442 and says, Am I the asshole for leaving my husband for him and his parents' rude behavior? And before we do get into the story, I just want to give you a warning it does contain death of a parent, emotional abuse, mentions of cancer as well so if you do want to skip the story timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below thank you and it says i 25 female have been married to 24 male for four years the first two years of our marriage we were stationed in north carolina but have since moved to texas where his family lives since moving to texas i've gotten to know my in-laws and what i know is that they are all disrespectful all of them almost as if it's hereditary. Here's a few examples. I'm Korean and my husband's family is Mexican. My sister-in-law tried bulgogi, which is beef marinated in a sweet sauce and gagged in front of me when she took a bite of it, spitting it out and complaining that she didn't expect it to taste like that. Every time we go out to eat, my in-laws will run the waiters back and forth, asking for special requests and refills. But if they don't like the food or they forget one item that they ordered, they will literally tip the way to change from out of their pocket. I'm talking like $5 on a $120 bill, even if their service was amazing. If we go into a store or go to the gym and it's about to close, they will be the last people to leave. And not last, as in they close 9pm and they are leaving at 9pm. Last as in they close at 9pm and we're barely walking out the door at 915 Every time an instance like this happens, my husband and I get into it. They usually end with my husband making excuses like that's just the way my family is or I don't care what other people think and neither should you. My last straw was when my mother was unexpectedly diagnosed with cancer. I flew back to my home in Korea to take care of her for a while when she was getting her chemo. I stayed for two weeks before needing to go back to my home in Texas for work obligations and can you guess who never once reached out to me the whole time I was there? Yep, my in-laws. Not once did I receive any call or text message. Not even when I came back did the topic of my mum come up. My husband told me he told them about my mum. So I don't understand why no one could have just checked up on me or at least called my mum. The next time we saw my in-laws was the next day I came back from Korea. They were over for dinner. I waited to see what they were going to talk about. And as they continued discussing what cows they wanted to buy, I left the room and didn't come out for the rest of the night. When they left, my husband angrily confronted me, telling me how disrespectful I was. I honestly didn't even have it in me anymore to fight. I just packed my bags and booked the next flight to Korea. All my husband's and in-laws messages and phone calls are being ignored because I just cannot stand their disrespectful behavior. And to hear my husband calling me disrespectful was enough. Maybe I'm overreacting, but honestly, this behavior is exhausting. I deal with it every time we go out and I am done. I don't want to be surrounded by people like this and I'd rather focus my attention on my mum. Am I the asshole? And we're going to start in the comments with Reward Hungry, who says, First, beef bulgogi is delicious. Second, it seems like your resentment and frustration had been steadily increasing over time. You expressed your frustration. Nothing changed or excuses were made. The reaction to your mum's diagnosis is the straw that broke the camel's back. How was your husband when you went to Korea for two weeks? Not the asshole. Ever says sometimes the little things add up and become big things. Your husband calling you disrespectful is not cool. Go take care of your mum. Just also be aware that any debt your husband incurs while you're still married is half yours according to US law. So you may want some kind of legal separation or divorce file to prevent him trying to stick you with some crappy credit card debt. Not the asshole for having standards around behavior and for tipping adequately. That's just human decency. I wish more people did. Chevely says, while they do sound a bit disrespectful, if this is all that's wrong with them over a period of four years, I think you could do a lot worse. Speaking from personal experience, you also amp up the worst situations in your mind to make them even worse. As a European, I have a hard time gauging how bad tipping out of pocket is. I rarely, if ever, tip anybody for doing their job. I'm probably as likely to tip a waiter as you are to tipping your mechanic or supermarket employee. Sis Era says everyone sucks here. They were most definitely disrespectful, and your husband was dismissive of you feeling disrespected. 
but you played passive aggressive games and never once spoke up for yourself. You don't get to be mad that other people don't change their behavior towards you if you don't actually speak up. So you'll suck. And Eclecticide says, who the fuck doesn't like Bulgogi? Honestly, not the asshole at all. They're clearly the kind of people who can dish it out but can't take it. They want to not care what anyone else thinks of how they act, but then they get their panties in a twist over you leaving the room. What entitled children? And the person telling you that you're overreacting is out of their mind. They have every right to be fed up with their behavior and refuse to tolerate it. You've put up with it for long enough as it is, and you've made efforts to find some kind of middle ground by speaking to and eventually arguing with your husband. None of them have displayed any respect for you or your feelings, including him. Why would you want to stick around for that? Also, I hope your mother is doing better. Now, first off, I've never tried bulgogi before, but it does sound very interesting. A lot of people in the comments saying it's absolutely amazing. And I'm also extremely sorry to hear about what your mum's going through and what you're going through at the same time at the moment. And there was a fair few comments on this one saying OP, you know, need to speak up for themselves, etc. And I know it's something I say often, but as I was reading it and, and going through it, and obviously I don't know their full relationship, but the, the, the question that always goes through my mind is what does this person bring into your life? It sounds like you're being treated as second best in your relationship. When you're being disrespected, you're being told that's just how they are, but family. And obviously I don't know the full dynamics of this family and how much they communicate and all this sort of stuff because... Some of, the, some of the sentences, like not once did I receive any call or text message from the in-laws and they didn't phone to like call your mum or whatever. Again, I don't know the full relationship. It doesn't sound like you've got a, a massive bond with them anyway. Again, I'm not trying to excuse any kind of behavior because I'm, I find their behavior totally disrespectful, just like yourself. I know if any of my sister-in-laws, their family is ill and next time I see them, I'm definitely asking them or I'm contacting them to ask them how they're doing and how their family member is, etc. And if there's any way that we can sort of help them and all that kind of thing. But the fact this is being turned around on you sounds like time and time again. And like one of the comments says, it sounds like it's been building up for a while. But it gets turned around on you every time and you're the one that's being called disrespectful. I can't blame you for feeling the way you do. OP adds a reply to someone on this one and says, thank you for all your responses. Those that agree with me and those that don't, because it allows me to see other sides of the situation besides my own. I just wanted to clarify a few things real quickly. One, I did not divorce my husband. I'm staying in Korea for the time being. Two, for those of you asking, my husband did not call me while I was in Korea the first time. Any conversations we had was initiated by me. He did not reach out to me, nor did my in-laws. So OP does update the post and says to clear things up a little. The situation happened over a month ago and I've been in Korea ever since. My husband and I did not get divorced but we had talked things out and decided I needed space to take care of my mum first and whatever problems that we had can be discussed at a better time. As for my in-laws, I haven't spoken to them since. I really wanted to work things out after reading a few of the comments saying my in-laws behavior is not the fault of my husband. I thought that maybe I was being too judgy over behavior that I'm not used to. That maybe they're not all bad, but they just have a few faults. As for my mom, she hasn't been doing so well. She's been losing a lot of weight because she says that everything she eats tastes like metal and she's been in constant pain. It's gotten so bad that she can't even get out of bed by herself. On top of that, I'm having a tough time watching my mom struggling and feeling like I don't have anyone on my side during this time especially since my husband's family still hasn't reached out to me. Last week, my husband reached out to me telling me that his mom had tonsillitis and was going in for surgery. Reluctantly, I reached out to her and told her that I'd be praying and wishing her a safe surgery. I even had the hospital's gift shop send flowers up to her room because I couldn't be there. I figured that maybe they just weren't the type of people to reach out and that I should put whatever happened in the past. My husband expressed how grateful she was and how happy she was to have received the flowers, hoping that I was doing okay in Korea. Unfortunately, I wasn't. Fast forward to a week later, my mother's condition had gotten so bad that she lost her battle with cancer and passed away. I told my husband what happened and he was in just as much of a shock as I was. He said that he was sorry, telling me how much of a good mother she was and how happy she must have been to have me by her side during her last few days. 
We were preparing to get the funeral done in the next few days, so I asked my husband what day he could be here. He was hesitant on the phone, saying that he felt bad for my mother and all, but he also had his mother to worry about. How he needed to be there for her, just like I was there for mine. I was in complete shock and just hung up the phone. He is missing my mother's funeral to take care of his mother who had tonsillitis surgery. A week ago. Unbelievable. Any chances I ever thought of giving him was completely out the window. It was insane to believe that he felt like his mum recovering from a minor surgery was more important than the death of my mum and his mother-in-law. I'm not saying that tonsillectomy isn't important, but I'm sure she recovered just fine as it's a very common surgery and the downtime is one to two weeks. And it's already been a week. As of now, I've hired a lawyer to discuss divorce and I'm going to therapy. I plan on going back to the US to end things with my husband quit my job and take my stuff back with me after my mum's funeral. As for his family, I haven't heard from them. Shocking, right? Whatever, I'm just glad to be done with him and his family and I'll be able to focus on myself and my mental health. And a comment calls OP out on saying, you know, that it's not a dangerous surgery or whatever and, and, and says, you know, having a tonsil out as an older person is pretty dangerous and people do die from it. And OP says, yes, I understand that now, that it is not minor, but she is fine and already back to her job working. I should have mentioned that. And for me, as I was feeling whilst reading the story, I may be right or wrong. As I said, I don't know the full ins and outs of the story. I'm just going for how I was feeling whilst I was reading it. It just always felt like a buildup of this behavior throughout a period of time, that, that this has been building up to this explosive point, basically always being treated like second best and you know not considered by people that should be supportive towards you i totally get why you've totally checked out of that and once again i just want to say i'm sorry for what you've been through especially with your mum. a lot of that hit home for me talking about your your mother's symptoms and everything tasting like metal and not eating and losing weight and you know i saw it with my dad and i had a huge support system around me and lots of people helping with my dad so i can't imagine what you've gone through and that absolutely breaks my heart for you take time for yourself to grieve in a healthy way of course and much love to you anyway i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let us know your thoughts down in the comments below let's move on to another story and this story comes from cute classic 2954 and says do i 28 female need to worry about my boyfriend's 24 male friendship with his professor 25 female and it does come with an update as well my boyfriend 24 male became friends with his former professor 25 female sometime last year i don't know what to make of it they seem to be friendly and talk consistently every week and from what he tells me it's usually very surface level sometime last year after the course ended my boyfriend his professor and some of his male classmates went somewhere to eat together my boyfriend brought up that he was going to be attending an event, a plastic modeling show, and his professor showed interest and invited herself to the event and asked if she could stay at his Airbnb with his friends. My boyfriend and his friends were all okay with it. I unfortunately couldn't attend the event, but from what my boyfriend told me, he and a few of his friends met up at their Airbnb. That same day, his professor comes to my boyfriend's Airbnb and tagged a few of her girlfriends along. I believe they all stayed in the same place. The next day, they go to the event, went to a bar afterwards and got drinks. A lot of them, except my boyfriend, got pretty drunk and my boyfriend took the liberty of being the designated driver for his professor and her friends. His professor won some model kit from the event and, even in a drunken state, asked my boyfriend if he could stay up with her to work on the kit together. From what my boyfriend tells me, nothing else happened that night. After the event, everyone from that group created a group chat and they continued to plan and talk about future events together. Since then, my boyfriend and his friends had met up with his professor and got to meet his professor's fiance at the anime convention and it sounded like they all got along well. His professor continues to express interest in other events and it sounds like she may be attending another event with my boyfriend and his friends in the near future. I trust my boyfriend and don't think he is hiding anything from me. Honestly speaking, I think it's hard for me to understand their friendship as it's his professor. I've had a conversation with him on this and he let me know that I have nothing to worry about. I would like to hear others' opinions and see what you all think of this friendship. Is this something I need to be concerned about or is it really nothing? Thank you all. Edit, the professor was my boyfriend's former professor. 
She's classified as an adjunct faculty and works as an accountant as a full-time job, which explains why she is a young professor. My boyfriend has not graduated college yet and is still a student at his university. So Happy Procrastinator says to the OP, you should go to one of these events with them. I don't understand why you are not being part of it. OP says, I do struggle with social anxiety, so it makes me uncomfortable to be sharing a space with a lot of unknown people. I'm hoping to go to the next event though, since it's local. Happy replies to and says, just go. I experience social anxiety too, especially because I'm an introvert. But when I go to social events, it turns out it's never as bad as I expected, especially if I go with someone who cares about me. You need to go to see their interaction. OP responds saying thank you and I agree. I've also learned that it's not as bad as it seems and if it is, you always have the choice to leave. My boyfriend has reassured me that he will be there with me, so I feel better about that. Altruistic 2 says, I don't like it at all. Not so much from his side, but from hers. Her social interest and engagement with students is grossly inappropriate and unprofessional. Staying at their Airbnb, getting drunk and staying up with them when she stays with them, and then continued socializing. She has no concerns for boundaries. Sounds like she's absolutely loving it. This isn't just a female friend. It's his teacher, presumably not an actual professor because that's too young. I don't know how long his course is, but if it's for a long time yet, I'd ask him to keep friendship at a minimum. OP says I'm totally with you. I'm also quite confused of her choice of friends. I'm not sure why of all places does she choose to share an Airbnb with a former student and to be drunk with them. She's classified as an adjunct faculty, so she is a professor but is part-time. She works full-time as an accountant. The whole situation feels weird to me. Individual says you seem kind of hung up on the professor part, but if he's not in one of her classes now and won't have to take one of her classes again, then it's not that crazy. If a kindergartner is six and his teacher is seven, I wouldn't be too surprised they might become friends. That is not to say I think it is okay, because I don't. Everything could be above board, but I would also be a little uncomfortable if I were you. How can someone be a professor at 25? Opie says, yeah, the fact that she was his professor is what is weird to me. Like, this is just not a friend he made in class. This is a person who held a higher position above him. I currently work in higher education, so this situation just strikes me as uncomfortable for sure. And then says about the adjunct faculty. So around a month and a week later, OP updates and says, my boyfriend had a more of a heart-to-heart -heart talk regarding his teacher and he recognizes that it crossed some of my boundaries. He believes that she may be behaving the way she does because when she hangs out with her, her fiancé's friends, she gets bored with them and may possibly be seeking attention from other people. Several weeks later, my boyfriend had a conversation with his college instructor regarding their friendship and told her how I didn't feel comfortable of their friendship and how he thinks they should keep communication at a minimum. She brought up how she understands because her fiancé also had an issue with how she chose to share an Airbnb with my boyfriend. She mentions to my boyfriend that she sees him as a brother and that's why she feels really comfortable with him but that she will try to respect my boyfriend's wishes of keeping conversations at a minimum. Well, even after that talk, she continues to still message my boyfriend weekly on random life updates. Because she is also part of my boyfriend's chat in Discord, one of his friends invited her to attend another plastic modeling show that occurred recently and dinner. Since she accepted the invitations, I chose to attend as well so that I could personally meet her. The dinner occurred first and it was very uncomfortable because she practically ignored me the entire night. When she joined us at the table, she greeted my boyfriend but didn't say anything to me. Even my boyfriend noticed and got annoyed, but then introduced us. She got increasingly drunk throughout the night and was saying random stuff about my boyfriend to his friends like, he could have been the best student in my class, but it's because he missed some assignments, and boyfriend's name gave me a five-star review on Rate My Professor. She ended up not going to the show, but my boyfriend had a chat with his guys, and they told him that they want to respect my feelings too, and make it a guys night next time. I would like to hear others' opinions and see if you also think she is acting suspicious. Someone just comes right out and says to OP, she wants to have sex with your boyfriend, she's crossing major boundaries and has he stopped the conversation with her? And OP says, I wouldn't be surprised if that is her intention because there's definitely some shady people out there. I agree she is crossing some professional and personal boundaries and I think it's quite unusual behavior for any teacher to act like that. Yes, he has stopped communicating with her, she was consistently messaging him until last week. So hopefully she got the memo. Now, firstly, I'd never heard of a plastic modeling show. I looked that up and that looks cool as hell. 
And I got to say, you know, I'm not very clued up on all this sort of stuff, but it did feel very, very inappropriate to me, that whole relationship. And the fact that the, the first time you meet her, she ignores you and starts treating you in a specific way. It, it kind of said it all to me, really. I feel like she was crossing boundaries and, you know, she confirmed yours and my suspicions when you finally met her. And when she said she actually looks at the boyfriend as like the brother, I was like, hold on. <laughs> but what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.